सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा परम वरिष्ठ ब्रह्मीष्ठ परमानंदिण परमानंदयति सद्गु प्रणतस्म्य हरि ओम नमस्ते टू ऑल ऑफ यू अ वेरी हैप्पी गुरु पूर्णिमा टुडे एंड ऑन दिस अकेशन आई विश ऑल ऑफ यू मी एंड द गुरु परंपरा टू कंटिन्यू इन द कमिंग इयर्स इन द कमिंग जनरेशन विद द सेम फोकस ऑन शास्त्रास एज वी हैव एंड वी शुड ऑल्सो बी सक्सेसफुल इन एसिमुलेटिंग दिस टीचिंग it is a very big coincidence that today we are having a class on mahavakyam and jeevan mukti mukti and i wish you all the very best in your spiritual journey let us start the class now now in the two important verses that we have been seeing 81 and 82 shankaracharya summarizes the teaching he has given from verses 66 to 80 namely brahma satyam jaganmitya jeevo brahmaiva na paraha which is the central teaching of the vedanta okay so we've been seeing these two important verses and i said there was a verse brahma satyam jaganmitya which occurs in brahma gnanavali mala it's a very beautiful work on nididhyasanam or vedantic meditation it has 21 verses and in the 20th verse this shloka occurs ब्रह्म सत्यम जगन मित्या जीवो ब्रह्मैव नापरह अनेन वेद्यम सच्चास्त्रमिति वेदांत डिंडिमह सो अनेन वेद्यम मीनिंग इन दिस मैनर वन शुड अंडरस्टैंड सच शास्त्रम द वेदांत शास्त्रम इति वेदांत डिंडिमह दिस इज द डिक्लेरेशन द प्रोक्लेमेशन ऑफ ऑल द उपनिषद्स सो देन वी कंप्लीटेड दिस वर्स 81 राइट uh which was a very nice verse which was a summary of the chandogya upanishad mritkaryam sakalam gadadi satatam rinmatram eva bhitah tadvat sajjanitam sadatmakam idam sanmatram eva khilam yasman nasti satav param kim api tat sat महावाक्य विचार पार्ट इन विवेक चूडामणि एंड दिस इज बेस्ड ऑन चांदोग्य उपनिषद सिक्स्थ चैप्टर एस ऐ सेट एंड शंकराचार्य एक्चुअली कंडेंस द एंटायर सिक्स चैप्टर इन दिस वर्स द सप्त एस्पेक्ट द नेचर ऑफ एक्सिस्टेंस and in chandogya upanishad three examples are given clay and earthenware gold and ornaments iron and iron products to reveal brahma satyam jagan mitya cause alone is real all effects and products are nothing but names and forms and they don't have an independent existence of their own so similarly brahman alone is satyam the entire universe is names and forms or nama roopa only and they are mitya this is what we saw in the last class now let us continue nidra kalpita desha kala vishaya gnatra di sarvam yatha nidra kalpita desha kala vishaya gnatra di sarvam yatha जागृति जगत स्वाज्ञान कार्य यस्मादेवीरकण प्राण्यप्यसत 
ಹ್ಯಸ್ಮಿದಂ ಶರೀರಕರ್ಣ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಹಮ್ಯಸತ್ ತಸ್ಮಸಿ ಪ್ರಶಾಂತಮಲ ತಸ್ಮಸಿ ಪ್ರಶಾಂತಮಲ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಐ ಸೇಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಮಾಂಡೂಕ್ಯ ಕಾರಿಕಾ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ಮರೈಸ್ಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ವಿ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಸೋ ಅಹಂಕಾರಾದಿ ದೇಹಾಂತಾನ್ ಬಂಧಾನ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಕಲ್ಪಿತಾನ್ ಸ್ವಸ್ವರೂಪಾವಬೋಧೇನ ಮೋಕ್ತುಮ್ ಇಚ್ಚ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷುತ ದ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷುತ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಸಾ ದಿಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಆಫ್ ನಿತ್ಯಾದರ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸಸ್ and we saw a little about the dream example it was taken basically this dream example comes from here right so what is the dream example let us just quickly recap as a waker i don't experience the dream right because as a waker i don't create or project the dream therefore to project the dream first i require call some i require something called nidra shakti or the sleeping power it's a power so sleep is basically a great faculty that we've got just imagine if we don't have that power there are a lot of people who suffer without that power right it's a great blessing so the sleep gives a lot of benefits and without sleep that is sleep deprivation can cause really big problems so in vedanta also this is considered very very important this example and without this we can't explain a lot of concepts so the moment i enter sleep with the nidra shakti i project an unreal dream right so we saw details about avarana vikshepa shakti and all now right now just to recap we project an unreal world as a dreamer in dream not only i right the waker projects the dream with the help of this nidra shakti i lend reality also to the dream right so thus the dream has got borrowed reality and with that borrowed reality the dream world appears real for the dreamer you have to be very careful it doesn't appear real for the waker the dream world appears real for the dreamer for the dreamer the dream appears real with borrowed reality reality which is borrowed from the wake up so the dreamer appreciates or looks at the dream world as real but when he wakes up he realizes i myself am in fact the waker not a dreamer which he doesn't know when he is dreaming after waking he realizes that i am in fact a waker who alone projected and gave reality to the dream world now acharya says you have to extend the same process or idea to the waker and waker's world also therefore you have to talk about the projection of the waker's world naturally the question will come right who projects the waker's world the dreamer's world is projected by the waker but who projects the waker's world so i am a waker who experiences the waker's world as real so who projected the waker's world and gave reality to that so for that swami ji uses a word super waker okay a, a one level higher right so super waker that super waker is ishwara or brahman right who projects the waker's world the unreal waker's world very disturbing right initially when you hear this so the super waker projects the unreal waker's world not only he projects the unreal waker's world he lends reality to the waker's world then with that borrowed reality the waker's world appears real for the waker not to the super waker for the waker it appears real with borrowed reality so this waker waking up into the super wakehood is called spiritual awakening or becoming a gnani and when the agnani waker becomes a gnani waker a spiritually enlightened waker the gnani waker realizes that i am not really a waker i am in fact a super waker just exactly as the dreamer realizes i am the waker not a dreamer right on attaining this knowledge the waker realizes that i am the super waker therefore the gnani is able to say along with god like gnani is able to say that i am projecting this waker's world 
and I am giving reality to the waker's world. I am the Stiti Laya Karana, Srishti Stiti Laya Karana, right? The Karta of this world. He is able to say that. He is able to say, Mai Eva Sakalam Jatam, Mai Sarvam Pratishtitam, Mai Sarvam Layam Yati, Tad Brahma Dvayam Asmyaham. And also, as we saw in Taitreya Upanishad, the Jnani runs about, moving, moves about in the world. Aham Vrikshasya Rereva, Kirtih Prishtam Girereva, Urdva Bhavitro Vajiniva Swamrutam Asmi, Dravinagum Savarchasam Sumedha Amritokshitaha, Iti Trishankur Vedanu Vachanam. In Shikshavali, we saw this. Right? So, every Jnani declares, I am the super waker, I am the projector of the world. So, Shankaracharya in Manisha Panchakam says, Brahmai Vaham idam Jagatcha Sakalam Chinmatra Vistaritam. I am the super waker Brahman with Maya Shakti and with the Maya Shakti I have projected Sarvam Chaitad Vidyaya Trigunaya Shesham Maya Kalpitam. So, with the help of Vikshepa Shakti, the Mula Vidya, the Maya, I have projected this unreal world. No doubt the world appears real. But the reality is borrowed. Thus, a jnani knows that the world is unreal. It is projected by me, which includes my body-mind complex also. They all belong to the Mithya Prapancha. Very subtle difference and an important difference. The difference is when a dreamer becomes a waker, the dream world disappears. But when the waker becomes a jnani and claims I am super waker, at that time the waker's world does not disappear. So the jnani continues playing a double role. For the world, he is a waker. For himself and other jnanis, he is a super waker. Thus every jnani is a waker comes super waker. So that is why Krishna says, I am Akarta, I am Karta. Very confusing, but one has to understand these details. In chapter 4, right? Tasya Kartaram Apimam Vidya Kartaram Abhyayam, right? Know me to be the author of the Chaturvarnyam, also know me to be a non doer and changeless. The same sentence in the second Pada, he says that, right? You have to understand the meaning behind it to get this, right? That is said here in this shloka. Nidra kalpita desha kala vishaya nyatradi sarvam. Sarvam means the entire dream world, swapna jagat consisting of desha, the dream space, which is different from the waker space. Obviously, right? Think about it. The whole universe is in the head, in the dream. There is no space, right? So, obviously, the space which is projected is of totally different coordinates in the dream. Right? Then, kala the dream time, vishaya, the dream beings and objects. Then, nyatra adi, right? So, that's a special sandhi. That's why I thought I must add this. You might miss this. Nyatra adi, the experiencer, etc. The subject, object, duality, plus space and time to accommodate that. All of them are nidra kalpitam. They are all projected falsely with the help of nidra shakti. Yata mitya tadvati api jagrati. Jagata. Exactly like that. Tadvata in the same way. Iti api jagrati. In the waking state also. In jagrata vasta also. Mithya jagat. This entire universe consisting of four factors. Desha, Kala, Vishaya, Nyatra, Adi. All of them. Right? Time and space. The coordinates. Right? The Vishaya, the objects. And the world itself. And the observer. So, the un, for, a, for a Jnani... Right? All of these are unreal. The super waker alone is real. For an Agnyani, everything is real with borrowed reality. Right? So, whenever we say Mithya, we must always remember that it is Mithya for a Jnani or a super waker only. It is not Mithya for the waker who is actually in the Jagrat world. Right? So, Jagrati jag Jagat Mithya. Why? Because Swagnana karyatvataha. Swagnanam. Here means mula vidya. So while discussing karna sharinam, we, so we saw four words avyaktam, shakti, mula vidya, maya. So here the word agnanam refers to mula vidya or maya. 
So what Maya? Swa Agnyanam. This Maya of Brahman. But Jnani doesn't say Brahman's Maya. He does not say Ishwara's Maya. Jnani has woken up. So he says, I am Brahman. I am Ishwara. I am Super Vekar. Therefore, he can say Mai Maya. Right? So thus Jnani can play both roles. He can say, I am the Vekar. With my Nidra Shakti, I project the dream world. He can also say, I am the super waker and with my Maya Shakti, I project this world also. So both worlds are Mithya, but the means of projection vary. One is through Nidra Shakti, another is through Maya Shakti. There is only difference. And both have got only borrowed reality. Both are only relatively real. Right? So the dream world is real in relation to the dreamer. And the waker's world is real in relation to the waker. So both of them are unreal in relation to the super waker jnani. So swagnana karyatvataha, swagnana karyatvataha, since they are one's own projections, they both are mitya. So here karyatvataha, very interesting. And for me, I sometimes I note these uh, grammatical points because they are not normally discussed. This is called a Heto Panchami, right? So, Tasmat Mithya Karyatvataha. We have to connect the reason. The cause for being Mithya is Swagnana Karyatvataha. It is due to Agnana Karyam. Karyatvataha is called, it is called Heto Panchami here. So, Yasmat Evam Idam Sharira Karana, karana Prana Ahamadi Api Asat. Since the entire universe is Mithya, you cannot say world is Mithya. But my body is Satyam. Body is also part of a created world only. Mind is also part of the created world. Sense organs are also part of the created world. Therefore, idam sharira karana, sharira karana prana ahamadi. So, shariram meaning the stula shariram. Karana meaning all instruments, the sense organs. Then the pancha prana. Then aham meaning the buddhi or vijnana maya kosha. Right? Or ahankaraha. So, Adi includes Sanchita, Agami, Prarabdha, Karma, all of them. They are all products, right, in the empirical world. In dream, if a person does some karma, he is reaping the result. Both of them belong to the dream plane. So, Karma and Karma Palam, both are Mithya, right? This is what is indicated by Adi, right? Api Asat, Asat means Mithya. That is also Mithya only. So, dream body, mind, sense complex is also Mithya. Baker's world is also Mithya. Dream world is also Mithya. And Baker's body, mind, sense complex is also Mithya. So, whatever I experience is Mithya. Tasmat Tattva Masi. So, naturally the question will come, if everything is Mithya, everything is borrowing reality, then there must be some Satyam principle to lend reality. So, Acharya says, Everything experienced is Mithya, but I, the Sakshi Chaitanyam, call the changeless experiencer of everything alone is Satyam. Right? So, and you are that Satyam, the Sakshi Chaitanyam. You are neither the dreamer nor waker. You are the super waker. Tatu Tvam Asi. So, you are that Brahman, the super waker. Get up. So, in the Katopanishad mantra, if you now connect, Uttishtata, Jagrata, Prapya Varan, Nibodhata. May you wake up, may you get up, right? Because if you don't wake up, then you will not be able to claim your real nature, right? So, how to wake up? Not like you get up from sleep, right? So, the next sentence in Katopanishad is Prapya Varan, Nibodhata. In normal sleep, waking up happens automatically, which is triggered by prarabdha karma. But super waking doesn't automatically happen. Therefore, the Upanishad says, Varan prapya. Varan meaning, Shrotriyam Brahmanishtam Gurum prapya Tad Vijnanartam Sa Guru Meva Abhigachet. Mundaka Upanishad. So, go to a guru and nibodhata, learn from him and wake up. So, you are the super waker. May you wake up to that nature. Who is the super waker? Brahman, right? So you please wake up to your higher nature, Brahman. So the fourth line indicates that uh, the last line, exactly like the previous word, yes param, yat param, tasmat, yat param, prashantam, amalam, advayam, tad, brahmatvam, asmi. So therefore, you are that non dual Brahman which is free from modifications 
impurity and limitations. Thus, the summary of the Mandukya Karika Vaitatya Prakaranam. Okay, the second book. And it's a summary of basically Sadvidya Prakaranam of Chandogya we saw in verse 81 and in verse 82 Mandukyas, Mandukya Karikas Vaitatya Prakaranam Gaudapadacharyas we saw in uh, verse number 82. And with this he concludes his Vedantic teaching. Nidra kalpita deshakala vishayagnyatradi sarvam yata mitya tadvadi hapi jagrati jagat swagnyana karyat twataha yasma deva midam sharira karana prana hamadhyapyasat tasma tatvamasi prashanta mamalam brahmadvayam yat param. So now just to recall where we are in this study and in this journey, with this the third extension is also completed. The consolidation is also coming completed. So going back, all the seven questions raised by the students have been answered. Student, ko nama bandaha, katamesha agataha, katam pratishtasya, katam vimokshaha, ko atma, paramakka atma, tayor viveka, katameta duchyatam. So we've completed the seven questions. And then as an extension, we also saw the uh, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya Jeevo Brahma Ivana Paraha that also we saw. So that is also over with this verse 82. Right? So the seven questions related to the seven topics covered in the text plus the three extensions, totally 10 topics we have seen in verses 26 to 82. The 10 topics are the gist of the entire Vedanta. So we got a full picture of the classical Vedanta and extract an essence from all the Upanishads. It is this teaching we are going to receive through the spiritual sadhana called Jnana Yoga. So Jnana Yoga is the reception of this particular knowledge which has to culminate in Brahma Satyam, Jagan Mitya, Jeevo Brahmaiva, Naparaha. And these three should also get reduced to two because Brahman and Jiva are one and the same. So Aham Satyam, Jagan Mitya, Aham Satyam, Brahma. Right? So I am the only reality. Everything else is unreal. Right? So this is the Jnana Yoga teaching. So a student can assess himself. Am I ready for this Jnana Yoga? If I am ready, I will enjoy this and feel more like more and more entering into that with more commitment and declaration, more pursuit, etc. Right? And if I feel up to it, I can, you know, continue. But there are many people who feel Jnana Yoga is too much. It is far away from me. There's nothing wrong. That means that the sadhana chatushtaya sampati part is deficient and many students may feel that way also. Then the goal post is now sadhana chatushtaya sampati and not moksha. So we have to switch, change the goal post from Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya to the Jnana Sadhanani, right? And focus more on uh, from that, from the Jnana Sadhanani, move towards Karma Yoga and Upasana Yoga with a Low, slightly lower exposure to Jnana Yoga and the ideal text for that is Bhagavad Gita, right? So that is why Bhagavad Gita is, if you see, is more popular and more widely taught because that is something that has Upasana Yoga, Karma Yoga, everything, right? So the, the journey can be gradual and a person can concentrate and regularly check whether, you know, they have enough Viveka, Vairagya, etc., and the very interesting thing is as we go on this journey, as the sadhana chatushtaya sampati improves, our emotional problems and our worries start coming down definitely. And the time taken to recover also is very, very fast. And it's a very, very huge relief from samsara. So even if we are not able to go the full path, the jnana yoga is not that appealing, moksha is not appealing. This path of Karma Yoga, Upasana Yoga and on uh, studying Gita, etc. can itself by itself produce a lot of benefits. We must always remember that, right? So, of course, we don't stop the studies. We try to continue and we follow the lifestyle prescribed by the Gita and Krishna talks about so many values. So, we follow all of that, right? So, generally, we talk about five topics which are covered in the scriptures, right? So, a quick run through of, you know, a summary on this would be very helpful. So, Karma Yoga, Upasana Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti, 
not bhakti yoga and sadgunaha. So karma yoga means karma yoga, we've talked about it. Upasana yoga means meditation on Ishvara as both Ishta Devata as well as Vishwarupa Ishvara Dhyanam, right? So one can concentrate on karma yoga and upasana yoga. The third one is jnana yoga, right? So we can decide how much of time we need to spend on each of these, right? Or we can continue with just Gita. So Bhagavad Gita, if you see, Acharya clearly says that it is Jnana Yoga Pradana. But Gita contains enough of karma and upasana yoga. So we can, you know, go through that text. And then Bhakti. We don't call it Bhakti Yoga because it's not a separate yoga. It is a mindset or a reverential mindset required for all three yogas. So a karma yogi must also be basically a bhakta with Ishwararpana Bhavana and Prasada Bhavana. Right? So I hope you remember these two terms which we have done so much uh, in introduction to Vedanta and during Bhagavad Gita classes. So Jnana Yoga also requires bhakti because Jnana Yoga is exposure to the teaching of the Bhagavan. So the concentration comes from Bhagavan um, and it is Basically, from Bhagavan, you shift to Bhagavan's teachings. So, the same reverence is required, right? So, I depend more and more on God. And as a Jnana Yogi, I depend more and more on the Bhagavan's teaching. So, that's the shift in Karma Yoga part and Upasana Yoga part. You depend on Bhagavan. Here, it is more Bhagavan's teaching, right? So, from Bhagavan's dependence, I slowly move to self-dependence. And even in a self-dependence, I'm a bhakta using the teaching of Bhagavan. So, Jnani always remembers that this knowledge comes from the Veda and the Veda is from the God, from Bhagavan. So, Jnana Yogi depends on God's teaching and both dependence, whether you depend on Bhagavan or Bhagavan's teaching, both dependence requires Shraddha. One is Shraddha in God and another is Shraddha in God's teaching. And Jnanam can save me from my problems. Right? Even for emotional problems, I depend on this teaching. I don't run to God saying, save me, but I run to the teaching because this jnanam can remove both emotional samsara and intellectual samsara. We saw in the beginning verses of Viveka Chudamani itself. So that is the ultimate goal, world dependence to God dependence to self-dependence. What a beautiful journey. And if we could live a life like that, None of the other things which seem very big in life will actually appear big. They will start appearing trivial, right? So, the journey is basically world dependence to God dependence to self-dependence, self-knowledge dependence, right? Therefore, we have to ask, should my life be Jnana Yoga Pradhana life? Or should I keep Jnana Yoga as a low-key affair and should I dedicate my life to Karma Yoga and Upasana Yoga, right? So, and Bhagavad Gita deals with all these. So, depending on what we want, we can study both. We could enter into Upanishad, into Brahma Sutra, etc. Because those studies require more and more commitment, right? So, or a junior spiritual seeker can focus on the Gita, going through the entire Gita, the Bhagavad Gita. And basically, that is why Krishna himself in the seventh chapter says that there are Four types of bhakti, right? Chaturvidha bhajante maam jana sukriti norjuna artho jignyasur arthartha jnani cha bharatar shabha. So four types of people surrender to me, right? So artha bhakti and this is a very beautiful thing that we observe in uh, our culture. Uh, from the time a child is born and we teach the child, right? We, we have a god room, a puja room. And then, uh, you know, if as the child grows up and the child falls or say child, uh, you know, is very worried about going to school or writing an exam or something, then you like kind of get the child to pray to God, right? Or if he's not well or something, we, we teach them these. So that is Artha Bhakti, right? And it sometimes spreads all the way up to even adulthood, right? So a Bhakti to relieve one of distress or problems. Then the artharthi bhakti is you proactively go to God saying, oh, I am going to embark on this venture. So I need success, right? So you pray for success. And then jignasu bhakti is what some or most of us would be going through in terms of 
you know i now i'm in the spiritual path so give me sadhana chatushtaya sampatti and the bhakti changes from sakama bhakti to nishkama bhakti etc and then you know the bhakti itself becomes so mature as that of a gnani right so these are all available within the infrastructure of gita itself right and we also have shanti patas or prayers so that you know we can uh, we can become eligible for gnana yoga also right so this particular shanti pata in kena upanishad which is a samaveda shanti pata we've done this before kena upanishad tadatmani nirateya upanishad su dharmas te mai santu let all those upanishadic qualifications be found in me that is why shanti pata has become very very important right even today the guru purnima puja we chanted all the shanti patas today before we did the guru puja right so very important of course this particular shanti pata talks about my let my organ of speech prana is ears all of them grow strong all of that yes but importantly to draw your attention it see specifically seeks upanishadic qualifications right which should come in me so that you know who's a seeker of self so that i can uh, continue with my studies right tadatmani nirate ya upanishad su dharmas te mai santu o lord increase my sadhana chatushtaya sampatti let me be fit for gnana yoga let me develop interest in vedantic study and if this approach is followed for some time definitely the desire for vedantic study and will go up and bhagavan will give opportunities also right and somebody will come to guide and on this journey so gnana yoga itself consists of three exercises in the form of shavanam mananam and nididhyasanam so this prayer is to get us ready for that journey right so shavanam is consistent and systematic study of the vedantic scriptures a few of them are generally chosen by the guru in a particular order and the systematic study of scriptures for a length of time so that you know it settles down right and under a guidance of a competent acharya will help one gather the knowledge of all these 10 topics that we just saw right the seven questions and then the three extensions etc then the second exercise is manana which is the removal of all the doubts so one should ask the intellect right whether it is entirely convinced of this teaching or are there any lingering doubts right in the brahma satyam jagan mithya jeevo brahma eva na paraha one should have no doubts because doubtful knowledge is as good as ignorance right so finally and most importantly the mahavakyam jeevo brahma eva na paraha that is aham brahmasmi i should not have even an iota of doubt i should not say o oh, aham brahmasmi says the guru or says the shastram no that is my knowledge that firm conviction so has to come from the innermost heart that is called doubtless knowledge so mananam is a process of removing doubts and there are so many vedantic texts which specialize in doubt removal interestingly that's also look at how much the shastras have looked at it and analyzed so pramana asambhavana or interpretational doubts because there are different interpretations of the upanishad like vishishta advaitam dvaitam etc right so pramana asambhavana and brahma sutra especially the first chapter is focused on this nivritti pramana asambhavana nivritti and shankaracharya through his bhashyam removes all the doubts regarding advaitic interpretations advaita itself different forms of interpretation then prameya asambhavana that is the other one or logical doubts one can get away get any number of logical doubts right so a thinking intellect will always have this problem so other darshanams in today's uh, uh, guru purnima talk swami ji talked about other darshanam sankhya yoga nyaya vaisheshika etc they all raise lot of questions etc right so they do not believe in the shruti so we have to make sure that we have we have to uh, some of no they don't some of them believe in god some of them don't uh, some of them believe in vedas and they are astika darshanas so they believe in vedas but the way they look at vedas is different right so what happens is these are the uh, theological systems right and also like shaiva vaishnava etc they may have a lot of logical doubts 
right? And they may become the Purva Pakshis, etc. So we have to analyze all of those. And if we have an intellectual thinking mind, this it can be a more of a problem because you have to clarify all these doubts in the head. So there are Nastika Darshanis like say Charvaka, Buddhism and Jainism, which we have to sort. Then we also have these Jnana, Vaisheshika, Yoga, Chara, etc. Like especially Sankhya, which says uh, Prakriti is also permanent, Purusha is also permanent. So we have a lot of problems in, uh, you know, accepting those. We are both are not eternal in uh, uh, Vedanta, right? So clarifying all these doubts, logical doubts is Prameya Asambhavana. That Nivritti also has to happen. So we may have to study a lot of texts for that. And then that pragna, the knowledge should be converted into stira pragna, right? So, shravanam and mananam will give us this doubtless knowledge. Then comes the third exercise, nididhyasanam. This is an extremely important one because nididhyasanam alone removes the blocks or obstacles between jnanam and jnana phalam. So, the obstacle is viparita bhavana. Our habitual thinking process is called viparita bhavana. So it is called Viparitam because it is against the Vedantic teaching that I have received. So, so long as Viparita Bhavana is there, Jnanam will be there. But the Jnana Palam of or Jeevan Mukti, that Palam of Jeevan Mukti, peace and joy will not be able to derive. Right? And that is why people say, oh, I have intellectual knowledge. Right? So, it's like, uh, Swamiji says it's like having water in the overhead tank, but then you know there's no water in the tap. There's some clogging somewhere, and then you remove it, then the water will flow freely. So Nididhi Asanam is important for that so that the jnana phalam can be uh, enjoyed, right? So Shankaracharya in Viveka Chudamani devotes more than 150 words verses for Nididhi Asanam. So just to let you know, we were in 252 verse, which was our verse 82. And you can see that the next shloka we are going to see is talking about Jeevan Mukti Phalam and that is verse 427. That means Shankaracharya considers the practice of Nididhyasanam as very, very important. Right? Vedantic meditation. Right? From Dhyayi root prefix Ni. So it is a desiderative form of um, Dhyayi that is Nididhyasanam and here it is reinforced or repeated. So this Vedantic meditation is different from Upasana in Upasana Yoga, I meditate on Saguna Ishvara, Ishta Devata or Vishwarupa Dhyanam, right? So it is Dvaita Dhyanam, Saguna Dhyanam. Whereas here I am dwelling on the Vedantic teaching, assuming that I have gone through a long Shavana Manana Nididhyasanam. It will be relevant at that time if I am able to recollect all the teachings and dwell on it, right? Morning, as I said, for 15 minutes is the best time. But it is good to be in the teaching for a reasonable length of time, any time of the day also. So until intellectual conviction comes with regard to the 10 topics, right, the 7 questions and the 3 cardinal principles, we need to go through this Nididhyasanam. So the Nididhyasanam or Vedantic meditation is not thought removal. It is not Chitta Vritti Nirodha which is in yoga. Here it is not like that, but it is Vedantic thought entertainment, only Vedantic thoughts. So, removal of unvedantic thoughts and deliberately dwelling upon the Vedantic teaching. So, what do I hope to achieve with Nididhyasanam? Basically, it's not any new knowledge or anything that's already received. Just to ensure that moksha is my swarupam, I don't have to do anything to get moksha. It is already there. It is not something that, you know, I have to go and gain from somewhere. There is nothing like getting moksha. It is my swarupam. So, let me not look for moksha. That reinforcement and that habitual misunderstanding that I have to remove. It is not any mystical experience or anything. It is just the removal of habitual pattern of thinking or viparita bhavana nivritti. Right? So, before coming to Vedanta, we are obsessed with Anatma only because we never knew what Atma is, what my real nature is, what. So, we were always worried about the entire Anatma world, right? So, and interestingly, only when you think about this, it hits you. The world is so large, none of it matters to us. But there is an imaginary fence which is what impacts us, basically 
the fenced area or enclosure is labeled as me and mine, ahankara and mamakara, something connected to me, right? So, we, Swamiji uses the word pancha anatma, right, to refer to this carved out area, right? The first and closest anatma is mine. The next one is body. So, I've got prarabdha based identification with my body and mind. In addition to that, there is an ignorance-based identification also. So, I've concluded that I am the body and mind. So, Samanya Abhimana is Prarabdha and Vishesha Abhimana is our ignorance-based. So, there is an intellectual conclusion and these two Anatmas are my huge obsessions. And through this body-mind complex, I extend my Abhimana to the family because we are related to the parents, body is related to siblings, children, grandchildren, huge obsession right any free time we think or we are worried about this only right and then of course comes the house land property etc which is possessions which is the fourth one where we have abhimana then of course the career livelihood a profession or vocation so that's the fifth and final abhimana so my desire that is that all these five anatmas must be under my control perfectly so i keep tweaking one or the other Exactly like those knobs in those old radios, right? Some of you may not have even seen them. So, I not only want to have ownership, through that I want to establish my controllership also, right? So, controllership according to my Raga Dvesha criteria. So, unfortunately, as individuals, we can never have control on these five. We do have some control, reasonable control, because we do have free will. So, sometimes all our plans just go out of the wedding, right? So, during this corona, we saw so many things. Have, would we have ever imagined that weddings would have been conducted with 10 people, 15 people? Did we ever imagine that we would be sitting at home for so many days without eating outside, without stepping out, right? So, all this has happened beyond our control. So, and this over corona, the entire humanity, nobody had control in spite of so much of scientific advancements for several months, right? So, there are always many unknown factors. There are many uncontrollable factors. Therefore, things will be unpredictable, which means things can go against my expectations. Therefore, this anatma obsession will keep influencing our habitual thinking. And since everybody does that, almost everyone has concluded that healthy living means regular worry and anxiety. If anybody doesn't worry, then they will others will be surprised. Oh, you don't have anything to worry at all. Oh. And then maybe talking behind saying maybe that person is really irresponsible or so detached, doesn't care, right? So whoever worries alone is responsible, caring, etc. So this is our habitual thinking. This Vedanta calls us Viparita Bhavana. This Bhavana has happened because of our basic self-ignorance. The first aim of Nididhyasanam is to dilute this Pancha Anatma Abhimana by seeing that each one of these five Anatmas belong to the total Anatma. So, in our daily morning Vedantic meditation, we can dwell on these teachings, right? So, the total anatma is under the control of this invisible prarabdha, which is constantly, you know, battering us. So, Lord Krishna says, Tasmada parihar yarte natvam shochitu marhasi. Worrying over choiceless, choiceless situations is foolishness because they should, cannot be remedied and therefore the anatma obsession should be diluted. So, and then the four negatives as Swamiji says is ahankara, mamakara, ragadvesha are referred to as the dushta chatushtayam, right? The fourfold robbers of our peace of mind and happiness. We learn to handle them. So, through nididhyasanam, I have to learn to stand aloof as atma, looking at the anatma and say, Matras parshastu kaunteya shitoshna sukha dukkha daha agamop agama paino nityas tam titikshaswa bharata. So, just as Bhagavan has given natural immunity to the body, Bhagavan has given immunity to the body also. So, it's titiksha, the mind also. Titiksha is there in everyone's mind for invocation and nurturing, right? This immunity has to be built up. Then I am ready, I can face any. Situation, yadyat bhavyam bhavatu bhagavan purva karmanu rupam. O oh Lord, whatever has to happen according to the law of karma, let it happen, right? Let me not worry about what will happen 
which I don't know, right? So what I have to do all the time, I don't worry about it. So etat pārtyam, prārtyam mama bahumatam janma janmantarepi svat pādam boruha yugagata nishchala bhakti rastu. Let me do my duty and relax my mind and enjoy this wonderful Vishwarupa. So in Kaivalya Upanishad, we saw this, right? Anuraniya nahameva tadvat mahanadam vishwamaham vichitram puratanoham purushoham ishaha hiranmayoham shivarupa masmi. So the Upanishads are full of atma dhyanam, atma vibhuti dhyanam. So many shlokas are there. And Adi Shankaracharya has also written so many nididhyasana shlokas. Atma Panchakam that Swamiji spoke about today. Um, of course, there are lots of uh, uh, Panchakams, Ashtakams, Nirvana, Shatkam is there. Right? So if I can get some of these by heart, in meditation, I can use them. right? And also 21 verses from Viveka Chudamani, which Swamiji has chosen. I'll try and put it up uh, in a week or two. All of these can be used for Nididhyasana. I train my mind to reduce Anatma obsession and increase the Atma awareness, right? So, Nididhyasanam is reduction of Anatma obsession. So, when we say that, it doesn't mean that we should become indifferent to one's responsibilities, including family responsibilities, etc. It never says become selfish. We have to do, continue to do what we are doing, right? I don't ignore my responsibilities, right? I am aware I have to do my duties until death, depending upon my ashrama, right? So, Lord Krishna says even sannyasis have prescribed duties, right? They have to do loka sangraham. Loka sangraham evapi sampashyan kartu marhasi. Depending on your prarabdha, do loka sangraham in one way or the other, right? We have to take care of our duties without entertaining worries. This is called jivan mukti. And Bhagavad Gita talks about this, right? In the, chap in the fourth chapter, Gata Sangasya Muktasya Jnana Vastita Chetasah Yajnaya Charatak Karma Samagram Praviliyate The entire action of one whose mind is established in knowledge, who is free from attachment, who is independent and who acts for the sake of Yajna dissolves Praviliyate. The entire Ashtavakra Gita talks about a Grihastas Jeevan Mukti. Fantastic book it is. Very nice. Maybe sometime we can get to that also. It indicates that Jeevan Mukti can be attained by everyone. This is Ashtavakra Gita. And whether one is a Sanyasi or a Grihastha or a Vanaprastha Ashrami or a Brahmachari, but it requires Nididhyasanam after Shravanam. Else the knowledge will be there in one corner and the obsession will continue in the other side. Right? So only with Nididhyasanam, the great benefit of Jeevan Mukti will be available. Right? And such a jnani will never be overpowered by the world. So Swamiji presents this in the form of the five capsules of Vedanta. Again, very useful for Nididhyasanam. So worth getting by heart and dwelling on this. I am of the nature of the all-pervading and eternal consciousness. Right? And you can also say existence, happiness. I am the only source of permanent peace, security and happiness. The world may give them, but they will be impermanent. So I am the only source of permanent peace, security and happiness. My, but my mere presence, right, through it, by my mere presence, I lend existence to the material body and through the body I experience the world. Tameva bantam anubhati sarvam tasya bhasa sarvam idam vibhati. Right? We do this during Deepa Aradhana without remembering the meaning of this, right? A very important capsule. Fourth one. I am not affected by anything that takes place in the material world or in the material body. In short, I am never affected by any event that happens in the material anatma. By forgetting my real nature, I convert life into a burden. And by remembering my real nature, I convert life into a blessing. So worry and fear is generally saturating the mind because I am ignoring my original nature and therefore I convert life into a burden. So the entire life is an opportunity to basically dwell on my glory, my vibhuti, this, both the saguna and nirguna vibhuti. As a jnani, I can function in the world by invoking my super waker status. So life is an opportunity to claim my glory. 
ரைட் அகம் அன்னம் அகம் அன்னாதக அகம் ஸ்லோக கிருத் தைத்ரி உபனிஷத் ஸோ த்ரூ நிதி தியாசனம் ஐ டெலிபரேட்லி பிராக்டிஸ் தீஸ் பிகாஸ் அனாத்மா அப்சஷன் பிகம்ஸ் அ ஹேபிட் அண்ட் தட் விபரீத பாவனா டசன்ட் ஈஸிலி கோ ரைட் ஸோ தெர் இஸ் நோ வித் நிதி தியாசனம் திஸ் விபரீத பாவனா வில் கெட் டைல்யூட்டட் அண்ட் தென் வி கேன் டுவெல் ஆன் ஆர் ரியல் நேச்சர் ரைட் so that is why swami ji is our you know given a name swami paramartha ananda or some ananda right so that it indicates that ananda dominates and not worry and fear right so with this there's important shloka is uh, in fact uh, uh, shankaracharya talks about uh, uh, this particular uh, aspect in danyashtakam okay uh, சம்பூர்ணம் ஜெகதேவ நந்தனவனம் சர்வேபி கல்பத்ருமா காங்கம் வாரி சமஸ்த வாரி நிவக புண்ணியா சமஸ்தா கிரியா வாச பிராக்கிருத சம்ஸ்கிருதா ஷ்ருதிஷிரோ வாரணசி மேதினி சர்வாவஸ்தி திர திரசிய வசுத்து விஷயா திருஷ்டே பரபிரமிணி ஸோ வேதாந்தா சேஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வி லேர்ன் டு லுக் அட் த வேர்ல்ட் வித் த தோஷத்ரயம் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஓகே we say it as dukkha mishritatvam atrupti karatvam bandhakatvam etc then we have to transcend this raga dvesha also towards all the pancha anatma for a jnani the whole universe is a recreation a relaxation ground so jnanam is the result of shavana mananam and jnana phalam jeevan mukti is the result of nididhyasanam therefore a spiritual seeker will complete all these three levels within this life itself so that he can have jeevan mukti for a longer period he can enjoy the jeevan mukti for a longer period right so the de- for the details of the nididhyasanam you will have to see the original text acharya has given so many beautiful verses one of them very interesting very nice verse starts with these verses 254 up to 263 is the nididhyasana verses it goes like this ஜாத்தினீத்திகுலோத்திரூரகம்னாமூபுணோஷவர்ஜிதேஷாலவிஷயாத்திவர்த்தியத்மனி சோ வெரி ஃபேவரட் ஸ்லோக ஆஃப் ஸ்வாமிஜி ஆஸ் வெல் ஆஸ் சுவாமி சின்மயானந்தா Uh, i believe they used to get by heart and swami ji did a course on 41 meditation verses it's there on the app if you want to do this you can out of this he chose 21 verses for our daily nididhyasanam about it runs to 7 7 1/2 minutes so i will try and record this along with the slides and put it up so that in case you are interested you can use that okay so now assuming that the seeker has gone through these and attained jeevan mukti thereafter what will be the life that he can enjoy so the jeevan mukti phalam is what we are going to see in the following verses right and we have to present the jeevan mukti phalam then only the student will be attracted towards it right so that is what is going to be uh, presented so that the people will you know get attracted to this and will Uh, take up this uh, study so jeevan mukti phalam is now elaborately presented so which is starting with uh, the next verse which is uh, verse 83 i think we will start this in the next class so i'll stop here purnamad purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate ப்ளீஸ் நோட் தட் நெக்ஸ்ட் வீக் ஆன் சண்டே வி டோன்ட் ஹாவ் அ கிளாஸ் இட்ஸ் கோயிங் டு பி ஆன் ட்வெண்ட்டி நைன்த் மோஸ்ட்லி ஐ ஜஸ்ட் ஐம் ஜஸ்ட் செக்கிங் இட் ஜூம் இஸ் அவைலபிள் ஆன் தட் டே சோ யூ கேன் அசியூம் இட் இஸ் திஸ் ஐ வில் சென்ட் அ ரீஸ்கெடியூல் நோட்டிஸ் ஆல்சோ